Hey, this is Matt again, and I'm here to give you part number seven of the advanced programming tutorials. And in the last tutorial, we uh, laid down the basis for a side-scrolling shooter. And I, I actually have some good news for you guys that it is possible to make a side-scrolling shooter without having Pro Edition. There's just one big difference. And that difference is, if you make it with the light edition of Game Maker, your player's gun will not point at the mouse. It will either point right or left. And there are some games out there that do that, and they are very successful, but um, personally, I think the whole aiming with the mouse concept is a lot more precise, and uh, it's up to you guys, but um, I'm going to be doing a, a tutorial later about just using the Pro Edition to add features to this game. But um, right now, we're just going to be using Light Edition so that you guys don't have to buy anything to follow along with these tutorials. So on, the first thing you may notice is under our sprites, we have now we have a player underscore right instead of just a player. What I did is I just drew a quick little gun for our player, and um, what we need to do now is create a player underscore left. So I'm going to right click on this player, duplicate, call this player underscore left. Then I'm going to edit sprite. I'm going to click on transform, and then click on mirror flip. To make sure it's only checked for mirror horizontally, and I click OK. So now your player is facing left. So now I have a left and right player and a wall. So uh, what we need to do now is we just need to incorporate our directions in. So I'm going to go here under our A key. I'm going to go to main one, drag down the change sprite, and I'm going to say we're going to change our sprite into player left when we hit the A key. I'm going to go to the D key, drag out that sprite, and I'm going to change the sprite to player underscore right. So now, if we run our game, when we turn right and left using our WASD keys, our player, um, oops, I messed up with the program. So for our D, this needs to be four. Just ignore that because I had to make the game again really quick because I forgot to save it. Okay, yeah, it should be good now. So when we move right, our gun's facing right, and when we move left, our gun's facing left. So that's that that adds to your game a lot, and you, you can obviously still jump. And if you want to create create increase the power of this jumping, just go to the press W key, and then just do set vertical speed. You can set it to like eight or nine. I normally use eight for a game like this. So uh, what we're going to be adding to our player today is the ability to shoot. So um, we, we've already added this ability to a player before, so I, I thought we should add something new to this tutorial. So we're going to do an automatic weapon this time, so you'll hold it down and it will shoot. So um, for this, we're going to first need an object bullet that's in the right place. So we're going to duplicate our player right, go to edit, sprite, just zoom in here. And we want our bullet to spawn in the barrel, remember that. So I'm just going to kind of draw like a little, I think that should be our bullet right there, that little yellow area. So I'm going to delete everything in the sprite except for that. So now our bullet is going to be perfectly positioned in the barrel when we create it. And uh, I'm going to set this to bullet underscore right. And once again I'm going to use that nifty function. I'm going to duplicate it, edit sprite, transform, mirror flip, mirror horizontally, click OK, click the green check mark, and then go to and then type bullet underscore left. So now I have both our bullets and both of our players, which is good. So um oops I put two underscores in the same question. Okay, so now we need to uh, create two new instances. So, first one's going to be bullet underscore right. And when it's created, it will move right at speed. Uh, we're going to use 9 for this. And um, when it has a collision with wall, it will destroy itself. We're going to do the same thing for bullet left. Move left at speed 9, and we're 
collision with wall destroy it so just make sure I didn't forget anything okay so we are good with our bullets now so now for our player the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add event um depends if you're using a laptop with like a um with a touchpad you're probably going to want to use space for this but if you do have a mouse available to you you're going to want to say mouse and then you're going to want to say left press or global mouse then global left press so i'm just going to program it for both to show you guys so uh for global left press oh sorry guys we need to set one more thing first so uh under our d key when we set our sprite we also want to set variable player underscore direction remember we're going to do this for the other game we're going to do the same thing we're going to set player underscore direction to value um, 2 which can be right and for this we're going to set player underscore direction to 1 which is left and the reason we can't use just right and left is because you can Game Maker 8.1 Not Pro Light uh, doesn't let you use variables that are words, which is kind of stupid. So I would imagine that the Pro Edition can do that. So now under Global Left Press, we're going to say if player underscore direction is equal to 1, which is left, which we said is left, we're going to drag out the startup block and a block. Uh, we want to create instance of object bullet left at position zero zero relative and then I'll drag down another one I'll say if player underscore direction is equal to two which is right we're going to create instance of bullet underscore right at zero zero so this is the first part of our programming, and I'll show you what happens when we do this. It's kind of crazy. Let's see what did I program it for? Okay, I programmed it for global left press. I'm going to right click on this, duplicate, keyboard, space. And I want to change it. I, I messed up. It's not, since we're not, since we're doing an automatic weapon, we want to change it from global left press. I want to say global left button, my bad. So let's hope this works. So um see now when we press the um now when I press the key, we basically shoot so fast it's kinda like a minigun. And if you wanted a minigun you could just leave your program like this. But I I'm thinking of this as more of a machine gun. It works for the space bar and the mouse by the way. So, um, since this is kind of like a Tommy gun, we're going to make it shoot slower. So, because right now it's creating a bullet every single step that you're holding down the um, space bar, which is 30 times a second. So, um, that's pretty crazy. So we're going to go in here, go to create, and I just want to add something. At the very beginning, we want to set player underscore direction to 2, because the player starts facing right. Um, and I'll just help it so you can shoot right away. Um, the other thing we want to do in the create event is we're going to set a variable called can underscore shoot to value 1. So when the player starts, he can shoot. Now, um, let's go into our space first. We'll do space. And, uh, we're going to drag out a big variable block on the top here, a test variable block. And we're going to say if variable can underscore shoot is equal to one and then we're going to drag star block and a block around this whole thing and then at the very bottom before the end we're going to say can underscore shoot equals zero and then we're going to go we're going to take an alarm and we're going to set an alarm here so i think we should set it at about ten to start and then we can move it down from there so we're going to set alarm zero to ten and then we're going to go to alarm zero, and, and at alarm zero, we're going to set can underscore shoot to value one. So this is probably really confusing for you right now, but I'll walk you through it. So when the player starts, 
you can shoot. Then, when you press the spacebar, it says, oh, you can shoot. You'll shoot a bullet, but then you can't shoot. We'll set the variable that you can't shoot. And then we'll set an alarm zero to ten, so since you're, since you'll be holding down the spacebar, the computer will keep going through this, but it will only do it once, and then, once this alarm goes off after ten steps, it'll be able to do it again. So basically it's kind of adding like a delay in there, like we'll only do it every ten steps. And if you don't understand that, just kind of like, go through the pattern of what the computer's doing. It'll, it goes through this, and just kind of go through the ifs, and it'll help you understand it. So now, I think we are ready to test our game. We just want to add this program for the mouse, so I'm going to delete the mouse event and just right click on the space one, deep mouse, global mouse, global left button. So, um, let's run our game and see what happens. So, now our character should be able to shoot and see how he shoots much slower, even though I'm holding down the space bar. Now, this is probably like this is not a machine gun fast yet. So, uh, let's go and we're going to go into our space. And we're going to change that alarm to, let's say, 4. So, it will, it will crit, you'll be able to shoot every 4 steps. Now, that, that is pretty much good for a machine gun there. Because it's not constant, and yet it's not like, um, not, and then it's not really slow. So this is pretty good for a machine gun. And you can see the bolts do look like they're coming out of the barrel because we set it like that. So now the player has his gun and he's shooting. Um, now we can just add a sound really quick. So I'm going to go on the internet like we always do. Find sounds. Find sounds.com. And I'm going to search gunshot. Now the key here is we want to find a, a single gunshot, so I'm going to try this one. That, that was pretty good, I'm going to try this one. That was more like a grenade launcher. If you want to find something that's really clear and pretty much as short as you can, so let's try this. I think I'm going to go with this one right here because it's really short and it's clear. So I'm going to save this as gunshot. Now I'm going to go into our game, click the new sound button, load sound, click on the gunshot, dot wave, I'll click OK, and then I'm going to go into our player, go under space first, go into tab main 1, drag out the play sound block, and I'm going to put it right at the beginning here, before the two ifs, and I'm going to select sound 0 because we didn't name it, and it's, it just goes right there before these two ifs. <coughs> And then I'm going to do the same, put it in the same place with the mouse. So now when we shoot, we're going to hear the sound. Okay, so that is pretty much the end of this tutorial. And I just realized since we're not going to be aiming with the mouse, there's really no sense in shooting with the mouse. So I'm going to delete the global left mouse button. That was just to, uh, I don't know, that, that was just me being confused, I guess. And the one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name this sound Gunshot1. So that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, your player can now shoot. And just subscribe, stay tuned for the rest of the tutorials, and have fun with Game Maker.